Hello all, today I'm going to be showing you how to dial in these uh, neon colors here. Look at that. Uh, and so in these uh, forums, I see where people just show, I guess when you do something, you're proud of it. And so there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm, I wouldn't want to show you guys, hey, look at this awesome neon shirt I made, uh, but figure it out. You know, so I, I want to show you guys how you can do that. Uh, if you didn't see the last video, you may want to go back and watch it because uh, we created a color chart t-shirt, if you will. And I'm going to show you how to do this with an acro rip or pretty much any rip changing the color output to dial in uh, that color. So, let's get into it. Okay, so we are in Illustrator here. This is just what I use again. Uh, and again, go back and refer to that uh, first video. Uh, but if you remember this shirt, this is what we printed last time. We wanted that royal color. So we're going to end up changing these um, colors that are black and uh, that royal color. Well, it's not more of a cyan on the monitor, but on the shirt it's a royal. We're going to change that to more of a neon green. So that's what we're attempting here. I don't think we'll be using the fir the first color chart. I'm going to use the second color chart here first. And we're probably going to be around here-ish or here for that uh, neon green color. And also, the, the swatch that you just saw me holding up, that was my test print for the day. Uh, I'm running one more here just to make sure. Uh, but yeah, run a small test sheet first just to see where your colors are going to fall and you want to test the uh, you want to test the ink limit here so how this is going to work if you don't know is the higher this percentage is the darker your colors are going to be so if you remember uh, we went with 50 percent here for the ink limit the last time so we were at 50%, but those colors weren't quite neon, you know, esque. <laughs> so what we want to do, and what I've already done for, so this video won't be extremely long, is uh, I changed these values to 30%, and I think this was my neon color here. But uh, where this is really going to be beneficial is uh, maybe your customer might want a neon yellow, neon pink. So we're going to knock out all of these at one time by simply printing another color chart. So the pinks are on here. Let me go back and make sure that... Well, I, I may end up printing this. We'll see. If I don't see the neon pink, you know, fall around here or here-ish, when I print this chart, I'll go ahead and print both of the charts and just we'll make a, uh, a back side of that uh, swatch shirt so that if anyone ever comes in you can catch all of the other colors of the spectrum that are not within that original 50% chart you'll just have to remember which side of the you know shirt your 50 and your 30s are but other than that we're ready to go here it looks like this print looks pretty good so we are going to uh, open our chart here our chart number two with an acro rip or whatever your rip software is going to be. Well, this is my Dallas line from years ago, uh, Oak Cliff. But uh, so we are looking for DTF chart two. And again, we're going to keep it at 30% once it imports. And then we'll make sure this is mirrored. I think I'm going to adjust my template slightly so that I don't have to move this over every time. And how you would do that is um, you would go to View, Template, and then you would change the starting point of these. And you would also be able to adjust how much the offset's going to be. But I'll do that later. 
So this is already pretty much set to A3. I'm going to go ahead and send this job over. Hit print, make sure these are both selected. Remember we want these repeated uh, variables to be consistent so that uh, the colors come out perfectly as you intend them to be. All right, so we have our film here. And again, if you're getting loading errors, press down till your fingertips hit the bottom of this plate of the feeding tray. You don't want this too tight or the paper or the transfer film rather will buckle. And yeah, you should feed perfect every time unless there's an issue with the film or I've heard of you also being able to use the double sided film, but we're just waiting on this job to to be sent. And the other thing that I love about Acro Rip 10 versus 9 is that I'll have to do a comparison video. I'll just have to one of these days. But Acro Rip 10 is, I mean, it sends the job over before it finishes parsing the file. Or basically, when the file's loading, it's already trying to send the data over to the printer. So, I mean, yeah, that's great. Okay, the big reveal. Let's see. <laughs> okay, so we definitely can go with it's hard to hold this at the same time but you can probably tell which one will be the neon here camera's a little dark but you could even go 20 percent if you wanted it lighter uh i don't quite see well yeah i like this pink here I don't know if you can tell, but that's pretty, it has a punchy look to it. But even, you could go even higher if you wanted to do that. But he's wanting more of a, a highlighter, not a neon. So that would be a highlighter green right in there. I don't know if you could see that here. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm gonna powder this thing. And then we'll be ready. All right. Oh, and a quick side note while I'm doing this, uh, you might not want to powder right next to your printer. Don't do what I do <laughs> uh, because I had an issue. I mean, it was super close the, f the first week that I got it, and I don't know. I mean, how can... Yeah, but there's some rubber rollers, or at least one, that actually grabs the paper. I don't know if I could... Well, if you have the printer, you'll see it, but... There's a rubber roller that grabs the paper, and if you don't have that uh, clean at all times, it's it'll put a little film on the actual rubber roller, and it'll prevent it from grabbing your, your transfer film. So it's not always the way you load it, and it's not always the film. All right. Okay. So this may have set for long enough. All right, just ready. It's really hot. Swatch is here.
but just to show, I guess I can do this because this will be the only time you'll be able to see this side by side. So I don't know how I'm going to do this, but uh, what you see doesn't always translate as well uh, on the shirt. It's not going to always translate well. Let me see if you can see that. That's not too bad. Uh, let me try to get in close here. Okay, this is the best that I could get it without it going all crazy and stuff. So, uh, you can see, I mean, I guess I should trim this, but I mean, you could see a big difference in those colors here. So we can see how, what did we say our highlighter color would be? Highlighter green. It's going to be this in here but what's most important is when we press it to the shirt okay here we are and this would be chart number two so Let's just assume I'm going to have time to do a chart number one on, on another day. And let me go ahead and put this before we split the difference. And this should be the top. Right. Again, um, if you saw the previous video, you want to do this on a white shirt so that if your vision is good enough, you can be able to see these um, Pantone color. All right, second press. And you'll be able to see why I mentioned that once you press it to the shirt, I mean, that's a whole nother story, you know. The colors may change a little bit. Some of the hues will open up. Yeah, I mean, I can instantly tell that. What did I say? That neon would be somewhere. Oh, yeah, I said that it would be, I want to say this color here. But. Ooh, that's hot because the film was on the other side heated up. But yeah, I'm sorry. I used to be in the cameraman. So there you go. I mean, you can't really tell. I don't know if I can. It's like overexposed. Maybe I can darken it. Ooh. A little bit. But again these colors will vary based on your printer and even the pinks and you really can't tell the vibrancy of that but you can kind of see it in that but these could pass but i would i would say to even uh for you i would set it at 20 percent since i ran this test but i don't have a lot of time here today to do it uh but if you could run that test at 20% for the ink limit rather set that at 20% and start there I mean these these colors will really open up so happy printing this is how you troubleshoot these issues so uh, even though I didn't get it perfectly right I could still pass for neon pink with this for a customer I could pass for neon uh, green but he wants this highlighter uh, color so I'm gonna dial this in. Okay, really quick, I'll go back to AcroRip and then show you how you will borrow those colors within Photoshop uh, and then send it over to AcroRip uh, for those that would like to see how you would actually include the shade and the, the, or swatch rather, into the artwork. So let me brighten this up. And we'll do our rows and columns method that I mentioned the last time. That should still be in focus. Okay, so 
Let's see if I were going to do the highlighter. I think this is a really good color here. So we're going to actually go from the right side to make this easier. So one, two, three, four, five columns. And one, two, three, four rows down. So five and four. Okay, so we are back in Illustrator here. And what I'm going to do is go back to what we said. This should be the right section, right? Okay, yeah. So we said one, two, three, four, five columns. And one, two, three, four. So what I'm going to do is hit I on the keyboard and select this with the eyedropper tool. If you don't want to hit I, the eyedropper tool is right here. And then what, so it's now uh, borrowed this color. So now I want to just draw a rectangle here and there's our color. Now what we do is we check and make sure that the color mode uh, is in RGB and make sure that the other document matches. So now we're going over to the artwork that I showed you before. And I just wanted to include this in the video because I don't want to do too many steps. I didn't actually copy. Uh, I don't want to do too many steps to where you'll say, okay, well, that's great that you were able to do that, but how do I get it into my artwork? So most of this stuff is impromptu, and I just kind of throw things in there to where uh, my brain will start firing off, and I'll say, wait, this person has no clue what I just did. So we're going to take, click this, and we're going to drag it over. And I'm sure you could do this in something like GIMP or something like that. I'm sure there's some freeware out there if you don't have Illustrator. So now what I'd like to do is I just selected this outline. And what I want to do is just go up to select same fill color now that has selected all of I guess those aren't the same fill color so if these were all the same fill color it would have selected it and then I can do the eyedropper tool again or eye on the keyboard and then select that square or I could have just selected the swatch that we created there so since these other gray aren't the same which they I, they have to be I need I need them to be select same fill color and for whatever reason there must be a layer oh one of these layers is uh, probably still active let me see here I have to figure this out okay now it's there so this should be a true white yeah so I don't know why I selected that uh, but here we go oh okay I can see why because of the stroke the stroke is set so we'll select the same stroke color that's what I I'll do only because this is how I set my file up now this selected it there we go I didn't export these to curves so now I drop a tool and we'll switch this back. And now I need to find out what stroke that was at. Okay, there we go. And now this color should be black as well. Fill color. Oh, that's already black. And then we're going to eyedropper tool. No, lead, no need to overwork, rather. And so this is almost our file. We can delete this. And also I need to... Uh, yes, these will be on gray shirts. So this, this output's perfect. We need this to be 
actually we need this to be black as well these are on heather gray shirts not charcoal Okay, so now what we need to do, what I need to do, and you need to do this as well if you have any sort of background, is to uh, turn that layer off or to hide that layer. We're going up to export. We need this to be a PNG. I want to keep the artboard so that it's fixed to the template with an acro rip. And we'll call this Tease Gray. You spell G, uh, gray, G R A Y. I forgive you. <laughs> uh, this is a judge free zone, so highlight a green. Yeah, if you spell G, uh, gray, G R A Y, come on over to the dark side. And I won't take up too much of your time here. I'll try to speed this up. And then I'll show you the final result here in just a second. Or actually, let, I'll, sh I'll, I'll go ahead and up import it. Uh, just so that, again, I'm trying to gear these videos around everyone on every level. Where you'll just fast forward if you know this stuff. But if you don't, hopefully I will have been able to have, uh, to be of some help to you. So we're gonna right click again. Don't come up here and do this uh, file and open. And don't do that uh, if you're in Acrorip 9. You want this to save all of your settings, especially from the swatch. It's just, you know, I, I hate double working. Uh, so just get in the habit of making things easier on yourself. So we're in the wrong folder here. Highlight a green. And remember, we're going to get in the habit of actually mirroring the artwork as soon as make you know, make a little sticky note tab that ha you know, where you have your little chart where it's part of you know, different steps of your procedure. I'm gonna move this down and over here. So it's never a bad thing to go ahead and double check. Now, if you're in Acrorip 9, your choke is probably going to be somewhere around 3 to 5 pixels. For some reason, mine switched to 2. Within Acrorip 10, we're making sure that all the resolution is the same. The layout tab never really changes. Ready to print. I'm going to load another sheet of film. I'll spare you the hassle of watching this thing print. Um, and then I'll show you the final final result. And then we'll see what the verdict is. Hang tight. Okay, so this is the uh, finished product here. And what I would say, two things. Um, now, this is fine, but if you're going to add black to this neon, remember that when you change the layout to 30% for the ink output, that is going to act, that black color is going to lighten up as well. Uh, so, second thing would be that I probably should have knocked the white out or just not printed the white ink for the white shirt. But all of these were originally supposed to be heather gray. So we switched to charcoal, but that's okay. But yeah, you get to see these colors. That's a, a nice neon-esque color, but it's more of a highlighter green that he was going for, not necessarily neon. But that's what this channel is always going to be about not necessarily just showing you um, what we're doing but how i'm interested in the how so uh, i gotta get out of here but thanks uh stay elegant be elegant and continue to watch our content thank you for all of the subscribers we've hit uh or close to hitting 300 so i appreciate every striking thing that i get stay elegant mm -hmm.